The true story of a young child from the working class who moves to the nation's financial metropolis. Hi friends, welcome back with a new amazing video from Rolling Movie Recaps. Today, I'm going to recap a 2009 drama and romance film titled Lula, Son of Brazil. Spoiler warning, watch out and take care. The film begins with a scene in which a man named Aristides is about to leave his wife and six children behind. His wife was expecting their first child. Soon after, he left and his wife gave birth to a son named Luis Inacio in Quetes Purambonco in 1945. Luis has grown older with the passage of time. He's a small child. He and his siblings were taken back to their mother after filling their water buckets in a lake. At the time, their surroundings were barren. When they came home, Luis Inacio informed his mother that Ziza had informed him about his father and Jamie. I'm not sure what it signifies that they vanished into the world. Her mother informed him that they'd left us. Is that a bad mother? Luis inquired. She stated that she was unfamiliar with Luis. Lobo, their pet dog, was theirs. Luis began to interact with him. Lindu received a letter from his wife in Santo Sopalo in 1952, informing him that she had given birth to a baby girl named Sebastiana. She'll be one year old. Tosino, one of his friends, sent him a note. Then Aristides said to his son Jamie to write a letter to his mother that he had to take care of children and everything we had. Because we worked a lot here and get very less pay, do not sell anything we have there. Stay here with boys and don't leave our land. But Jamie wrote the opposite to what his father said. He wrote, you need to sell everything over there and come here with children. Before leaving, you must sell the house, land, goats, and the saints in the living room. Mrs. Lindu sold everything. Then they all went to Sao Paulo in a truck. After 13 days and nights, they reached their destination. When they reached, Jamie welcomed them happily, but Aristides was not happy. He was angry that they left his dog behind. He left his home with his second wife and their son. Jamie said he can take care of them. Aristides, Jamie, and Dona Lindu did hard work for their family. Miss Lindu sent their other children to school. Aristides did not know about it. Luis Inacio sold oranges to people with his brother. He used picky lines to sell them. He also worked as a boot polisher. One day, Luis Inacio was seeing a children playing football. When they were invited to play with them, his father saw him. He had beaten him and sends him on a work. Dona Linda was trying to stop Aristides, but he was continuously beating Luis Inacio. He took a wine and told Luis that you need to work. You are not permitted to participate in the game. When a teacher was presenting report cards in school, she noticed Luis drawing. She inquired as to the nature of the performance. He depicted a truck and a tomb in his drawing. He told his teacher that a female died in a vehicle while they were all traveling to Sao Paulo. He wants to reassure her that leaving her isn't so horrible. However, he's unable to do so because she died on our road trip. Then he asked where my report card is. Then the teacher took him to his house. She asked from his mother that if she's allowed, then she wants to adopt Luis. Then Mrs. Linda said, I praise what you had done, but sorry, I can raise them on my own. Aristides saw their children in uniform and he started to beat them. Mrs. Linda came outside and was trying to stop him. He said that from today, no one of his children is going to school. They had to go to work. Mrs. Linda argued with Aristides and said she'll definitely send her children to school. Aristides got angry and slapped her. He slapped her many times. Luis came in between them and stopped his father. His father slapped him and said, get out of here. He said, man is a one who does not slap a woman. Aristides went away. The next day, Lindu took her children and left Aristides. He screamed a lot and used bad language for her. He tried to stop her, but all in vain. She took them to another city of Sao Paulo that's Villa Crocia. Luis played football in his school and became a good player. He fell in love with a girl in his teens. His friends called him Lulu. One day, he went to a cinema with his friend. He enjoyed the movie. One night, a heavy rain was started. It drowned everything with it. Linda was saying to her children, try to save yourself and everything as much as you can. In the street, everyone was trying to save them and their family. Linda had took her children and moved out. Time passed and Linda took Luis to the center where exam had to be held for machinists. He passed that test and learned every procedure to run machines. He worked with dedication and passion. One day, the National Industrial Apprentice Service announced proudly that they invite Luis Inacio da Silva, 
graduate of the class of 1961, to receive his diploma. Linda and Luis were so happy that day. One day when he was at work, her senior came and said to pack everything because the factory had to close. Workers were on strike and the owner ordered to close the factory. In 1963, Brazil had again suffered the shockwaves caused by manifestation of strikers' dissatisfaction. These strikes had been taken Sao Paulo into a veritable spectacle of vandalism. Despite the president's three-year plan, uniting agrarian, fiscal, banking, education, and voting reforms, President Gaujoulart still confronts a great deal of political resistance in various sectors. Ziza took Luis with him to join the strike. Luis went with him. Luis didn't know that his brother and his friends joined the crowd and involved in breaking things. Luis and Ziza had a fight over this. Luis left the strike and went back. Lulu went to a bar with his friend Lambari to forget the incident took place at strike. They both drank a lot and Luis reached to his home. His mother advised him to do a work, otherwise you cannot go so far. One day while working, Luis' hand got injured badly. His little finger was cut off. As conditions were getting worse by the day, many people were fired. Luis was among them. He was sad, but Linda stood with him in bad days and supported him. He got a new job in industry after his hard work. He met Lourdes one day in a bar. She was uh, looking beautiful. He was staring at her continuously. Lourdes was a sister of his best friend Limbari. He went to Lourdes and proposed to her for a dance. They dance a lot in the bar and enjoyed their new relationship. They both knew each other since their childhood. Lula was invited to join the union. Ziza insisted him to join it because he's the one who thinks differently. Lula was asking for Ziza instead of him, but Fiotza wants Lula to join Steelworkers Union. He joined the union. In 1969, he proposed to Lourdes. He took her to a house which he bought with his compensation. She said, yes, I would love to take care of yourself because you're going to join the union. They got married in a church. Linda advised Lourdes to be patient with marriage because it's easy to get married but difficult to handle it. Luis and Lourdes were expecting a baby while well, he was busy a lot with the union. One day, Lourdes got pains, so he took her to the hospital. The doctor told Luis to be strong because his wife and his child is no more. Luis faced a lot. He lost the love of his life and the baby too. He moved back to his mom's house. He sat on the sofa for a long time on which he and Lourdes spent a quality time together. His mother told him to go out with his friends, at least he said he was not feeling good. Linda showed him a letter that she found in his pocket. She said, it's not a secret that I was part of the union, but her mother got angry and told him that it was dangerous. He told his mother that he was a candidate for the director's position. Lula distributes this party passes to everyone so that everyone votes for them, and his party number one won the election. Fiotza was chosen as a director. Lula was disappointed because he thinks his union is working for the line works, but nothing for them was included in their agenda. He said nobody was in the meeting from the line workers because they knew there was nothing for them. He went back to his home from work when a taxi driver named Alvaro asked about his sadness. He told him that he lost his son and wife. The taxi driver shared his son's stories too. Alvaro said he lost his son who was murdered in a cab. He left his son and wife behind him. He showed his daughter-in-law a picture to Luis. Her name is Marissa. He said she was taking care of her son by herself. Conditions got worse in Brazil. Ziza came and asked Lula to help them because the military arrested more people from Ziza's party. Lula went to Fiotza and asked him to do things properly. Fiotza said that he was in agreement with them, but they cannot fire him and he's not going to cancel his registration. Lula said it's against the law. Lula said there was only one way Fiotza that will stay till the end of the term and then leave. Fiotza said that then they'll take charge. Lula said, when you were taking me on board, you said you'd need new blood, so I'll take charge after you. Luis met Marissa in his office where she came to change her social securities because she was a widow. He invited her over for coffee, but she said she was going for dinner so she couldn't join him. He told her that he knew she was Alvaro's daughter-in-law. They exchanged telephone numbers. He told her that he lost his family too at the same time when she lost her husband. Marissa Leticia was her full name and he liked her a lot. They both went for dinner together. Then later on they got married. In 1975, he gave a speech in the union where he said that everyone who gathered here wants the best for workers. We gathered here because we want to change, but that doesn't mean that we have to change the whole team. Justice shall be done. Claudio Fiozza was here who opened the doors for the union. 
but this is not enough. We all need a new blood and we're getting anxious. We know we can go there to a bargaining table with the bosses, sit face to face and make a deal. All the line workers supported him. He became famous day by day in the union. One day he said to all that now our board is ready to talk to our employers. But remember that no one is the enemy to their employers because they pay wages to us. No one from the working man or from government is a leftist. We all must be able to support our families. Everyone supports Lula. They celebrated his victory as he formed a new union and was approved by court after a six-year battle. Then Lula came to know that the army took his brother Ziza with him. He went to jail and asked them about his brother. They said he was a communist and you're a union leader, so tell us you can do better than us. Lula said, no, we're not communists. They let his sibling go. Lula was worried since his younger brother was working when he was 10 years old. He was unsure how to handle it because, in addition to salaries, people are begging to demand more independence. In 1977, he began his campaign. One union member described the campaign as crazy, claiming that it seeks not only more wages but also longer working hours from workers. During the strike, he learned that his father had died. He informed his mother that they would be attending a union gathering at the Villa Euclidis Stadium. There would be a gathering for all working men. Outside the stadium, a cop seized command. Union members have chosen to go on strike. The police launched a blitz and arrested a large number of workers. His mother had been admitted to the hospital, and the situation deteriorated. The army took command and told the union to call a halt to the strike. Lula ended the strike in 1973, and his colleagues laid him in a traitor. Lula is in charge of the steelworkers' union once more. He was apprehended by the soldiers. Lula was only allowed to go during his mother's funeral. Lula was released on May 18, 1980, after 31 days in prison. He ran for president three times in 1989 and 1998, but was never elected. He, on the other hand, never gave up. In 2003, he was elected president of Brazil. We hope you enjoyed our video from today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications of new and interesting videos.